A lot of times you might be presented with the question that tests your knowledge of Microsoft Excel user interface. Let's look at the sample question from the recent test. How to move the data set three cells down and one cell to the left in Microsoft Excel efficiently. You are presented with the data set of the student names. It contains names of the students as well as their grades in physics, math, chemistry and biology. Do you know the answer? Give yourself a little bit of time to see if you can come up with the solution. Ready or not, I am going to move forward and reveal the final answer to you. Obviously, there are multiple ways to move the data in Excel. One of the easiest ways is to select the data set and then in the Home tab use the Cut function. Identify the new location by putting the cursor in the upper right corner of the new location and pasting the data in the new location. But the question is, is this way the most efficient way, as the question asks? Let me undo this operation by using the Undo button and I'll show you another way which might be more efficient. I'm going to use the Escape button on the keyboard to unselect the range, select it again. And the trick here is when you move the cursor to the end of the range, you are able to drag and drop the range. I'm going to drag and drop it three cells down and one cell to the right and position it in the new location. Do you know any other solutions? Please make sure to share them in comments. A lot of times you might get a question on how to sort data in Excel from smallest to largest. For example, you might be presented with the data set which shows student names and their grades on different subjects. Here on the screen we see the grades in physics, math, chemistry and biology. And we need to sort this data set based on the student names. To accomplish this task, we need to select the data set and in the Home tab navigate to Sort and Filter and select Sort A to Z. This will rearrange the data in the alphabetical order based on the student name. An alternative solution might be to use custom sort. To use custom sort, you need to select the data, navigate to the Home tab, and then select Sort and Filter and then Custom Sort. Here you are presented with the screen where you need to select the column by which you are going to be sorting, and then select the order. In my case, I am going to select the column as math grade, and then in the order, I am going to select smallest to largest. Once I clicked OK, you see that the data set was rearranged from smallest to largest based on the values in the math column. Let's recap. To sort the data in Excel, you need to either use sort smallest to largest or custom sort functions. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. Very frequently on the test, you get a question about usage of formulas in Excel. And sometimes you get a questions on how to display data in the status bar. For example, let's look at the question how to display minimum, maximum, count and average in Excel status bar. You are presented with the data set of the student grades, which displays student names and their grades in physics, math, chemistry and biology. Do you know how to add auto calculations for their grades in the status bar? Give yourself a little bit of time to see if you can come up with the solution. Ready or not, I am going to move forward and share the answer with you. To accomplish this task, as you might have guessed, all properties related to the status bar can be enabled by right mouse clicking on the status bar itself. This presents us with the formulas for average count, numerical count, minimum, maximum and sum. In our case, we need to select average, count, minimum and maximum and you will see that all these values now show on the status bar. Do you have an alternative way to solve it? Please make sure to post it in comments. Here is an interesting Microsoft Excel test question which tests your knowledge of Excel formulas. You need to show how to add current date and time in Microsoft Excel using formula. 
and then format it as long date. Do you know how to do it? Give yourself 5 to 10 seconds to see if you can come up with the formula. And I am going to move forward and show you the solution. In fact, the solution is very simple. All you need to do is type in the now function. Now function returns the date and time in the standard format. To format it as long date, you need to navigate to the home ribbon tab and in the number format section, select the long date. Did you figure it out on your own? Hope you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. Here is an interesting question you frequently see on the test. You're presented with a set of data and you need to add serial number column to this data using Excel formula. In our case, we are presented with student grades information. And for each student, we need to add a serial number. Do you know how to do it? Give yourself a little bit of time to see if you can complete the steps in the simulator. And I am going to move forward and reveal the solution for you. The first step here is to add a new column. Assuming that we will be adding the data to the left of the first column, the easiest way to add a new column is to do a right mouse click, click insert, and this action adds a new column. We will give new column a name serial number and extend the column so we can see the data. The first number in the series, in my case, will be 1, but you can use pretty much any number. In the next row, we will add a formula, and our formula will be very simple. We will add the value of the first serial number, plus 1, or you can use any different formula depending on your business circumstances. Once you hit enter, you see that the second value is 2. And now I can expand this formula for the entire data set and you will see that the numbers are increasing. Keep in mind that this number might be different from the actual row ID. And if you use different formula, the number will be different for sure. And then the last step here is to apply formatting to the column. To do this, we need to select the column navigate to the Home tab, select Format Painter, and then apply it to the newly created column. 